So on episode one of the Art of X show, we talked about the Tulsa defense. I kind of focused on one of their six-man pressures that they ran and kind of went through the three high basics. But I felt like it would be important to kind of go through how the cover structure works in a little bit more detail to kind of follow up as a bonus episode uh, for episode one. Uh, they played in a game uh, yesterday. They won. They beat Old Dominion. And so I felt like it was a good, hey, man, I, I kind of released it the day after the game. Would like to go back, kind of go in a little bit more detail of how these three high teams structure their calls. Kind of one of the best formations to look at how a three high structure actually forms it, it is the nub trip set. It's one of my favorite formations. Uh, even though I am a defensive guy, I do appreciate offense. Um, I feel like I, I, you know, I try and be as ambidextrous in, in terms of football as much as possible. Plus, my old man, he's been an offense coordinator for ever since I was a kid. So we, we talk offense and defense all the time at, at the house. So wanted to make sure that when I go over this, that you kind of have an idea of how this how this defense is structured from player personnel all the way through to the coverage aspect and kind of all the different variations. And I feel like this singular play right here kind of gives you everything you need. It's easy when teams want to line up in two by two or put a back in the backfield. Uh, because what that the, the defense kind of stays even anyway. And, and really, this is an odd defense in the sense that the numbers are odd. But when you go two by two, it kind of alleviates some of the issues with because you you build you build your triangles with the the Sam and the Will, and then you have a middle safety and a Mike that are kind of stacked on top of each other in the box. Most spread teams, as I as I mentioned in the the previous episode, they don't want to run into the A gap. So if you have a big nose that can kind of plug in and kind of force that center to kind of sit there or, or demand a double team, you can kind of use your mic. You can kind of use that middle safety as kind of that, that bitter. When you introduce a tight end into the box or a snipper into the box, now you've taken that middle safety and now he's reading that tight end. He's a three fit player. So whoever number three is, and usually the snipper, they're just going to, they're going to, the sniffer is going to tell you usually where the ball is going to go. Now, that's not the case for everything. You can always get false reads, but just in, in terms of generalities, you know, think about split zone, think about counter, think about insert, which is just ISO, uh, think about stretch, all these plays that these teams are running now um, out, uh, out of the, these, this formation. The sniffer usually takes you to where the play is going to go. If you're saying, well, what about split zone? That doesn't really make sense. Well, the zone is actually going away. So it's cross action, but the, but they're creating an extra gap on the backside so that you can get a cutback lane. And so the ball is really actually going to go back. So if you teach your three fit to fit off, off the, the butt side of the tight end, that's usually where, where you're going to need that extra fitter. And it kind of cleans up everything for that. So just kind of a broad overview of, of, of how that. So let's dive into how they actually align to a nub trip set. Now, the, everybody wants to focus on the trips, and we'll get to the trips. But the most important part of this is where the, where the running back and the tight end are aligned. You actually have a two-receiver side over here, so you have to build a triangle coverage. Remember, it, the, the whole point of, of coverage is to have plus one. Right. Defense. The whole point of defense is to have a plus one mentality, whether it's in the run game or whether it, it's in the coverage aspect of it. So they want to build a triangle and they have their triangle right here. This is actually their triangle right here. So these two receivers are going to be taken up by these these three receivers. These four receivers will have these five defenders in front of them. And that's where you get your plus alignment. Right. So you have you have right here. You have three here. You have one, two, three, four, and you have five. Now, it, remember, this is a drop eight concept, okay? So you're like, wait, they have an extra guy. Why they got plus two over there? He technically is really in charge of this area of the field. So if anything, if he were to push, the mic's going to take it. Now he, now he would work to, to replace. If you get anything pushing over here, he would take it. Now he just works and, and replaces any kind of vertical threat. So. That's essentially kind of how they've structured it. Now, before I get to the front, we're going to start back to front. So you, we already know we have our triangle here. He's kind of the, the, the middle player. This is what you call super rotation. So this is actually your Sam linebacker. So in a 3-3 defense, which, which this is essentially a 3-3 defense, you have a Mike, a Will, and a Sam linebacker. He stays attached to the box. 
So he's actually the fourth player on the box. He's actually in charge here because you're, what you're probably going to get, depending on down and distance, is second and long. They they may figure, hey, this is a this is a passing down. I don't know the tendencies for Old Dominion, so they could give it a jet call uh, to where he goes vertical. But normally, on a normal down, okay, you're going to get what a lot of a lot of these three high teams call it a fist or a splatter technique. I call it a heavy five. So he's actually going to work to the V. Okay, and then he'll close that B gap, leaving him in the C gap as a fourth player. So what super rotation means, going back to the secondary, is that this is your middle safety, this is your free, your field safety or free safety. They are actually going to rotate over. The corner is going to come down on top of number one, and you are going to get a safety over the top. Now, the coverage variations that you can have over this it's any you can almost run whatever you want, uh, and that's one of the beauties of this system. So in the clip, let's look at the clip. You're actually going to get what looks like a special coverage or stubby. Okay, they're just making it look like they're just doing it from depth, and they're making it look like, uh, hey, we might be able to run some some cover two or anything like that. But the but the corner stays on number one. So the what this just means is look. He's essentially going to play any out by three. He's got the vertical. He's the wall two player. Notice we've built a triangle over one and two. Okay, these guys right here. He's going to X out number one. We've got a triangle over here over these two receivers right here. The extra guy is right here, and he will work to the middle. So that's our drop eight concept where we've now run. We're running two read over here. We're running two read over here. We've got him. This is why it's called a Tampa defense, because if he runs through the middle of the field, now you've got Tampa two, and we've X'd out that receiver. The other variations that you can get is he can cut number two, he can work vertical, and then he can almost play like a, a solo or what I call a poach technique on number three. So, But if number three goes underneath or number three goes out, he would end up taking, and then he goes and closes the post. You can play cover two over here. And so now, look, we've essentially got into Tampa coverage without ever doing anything. He's your wall two player. He's now your low hole. He's your high hole. He's your wall two players. So you now have you now have a different variation. The other thing you can do is you can bring him down and you can bring him back. And now he becomes the wall two player. He becomes a two read player. You can send him on a pressure or you can send you, he can just kind of be a bonus drop or a spy. And you can really kind of work any kind of cross. He could go high. He could sink into the middle. He's now your wall two. He now is your cloud force, and now he's deep. So notice how we're getting into all these different variations uh, of things. The other, the last thing, if you wanted to go single high, is that you could feather him out. You could cut him to the flat. You could put him in the middle. You could drop him down, and now what we've got is cover three is a drop eight cover three with kind of a bonus dropper in the middle is, is either a spy rat in the hole, whatever you want to call it. So just from this alignment alone, Tulsa can run any coverage they want to answer it. But the most important part of looking at this is where the stack is here, keeping your triangle here. And then obviously what variation of four over three are you going to have with a bonus drop in the middle. Now, the la last thing let's talk about, let's talk about the front before we get into the play. Typically, when you introduce an inline tight end, you're going to get a 505 with two splatter DNs. They're going to basically try and close this. He's going to close both A gaps, which allows him to fit inside the tight end. He's outside the tight end. He now is the extra gap in a gap wherever he decides to go. Normally, it's a lag. So let's just say he's going to go to the back. He would take the A gap away from the back, and now he's got the C gap. So what you essentially have is he's got the C, he's got the B, he's got the A, he's got the B, he's got C, he's got the O gap or D gap, and then he's got the A gap. So 
now you are gapped out in the front versus the run game, but you've leveraged any kind of RPO screen over here by presence alone. He's not going to just slam the door shut on the C uh, in other, unless he gets quick run action right now, knowing that the RPO most likely is going to be over here. A lot of teams don't run flop reads. Some do, some don't. It's really an offensive coordinator preference. But this kind of gives you a general overview of how Tulsa structures are deep, how a three-high system like Iowa State, some of these other iterations that you see in the Big 12 and across the country are running a zone cover three, or I mean zone three-high defense versus the spread. So let's watch the play. We're going to get what I like to call, it, it's essentially shallow with number one. It's a vertical route, and you can see everybody's right there. Everybody's covered. So I call, this is basically shallow. He's going to run under. You're going to get the dig coming back from number one. So they're going to clear out this, and then the back's going to push out, bringing him. He can now work to the middle of the field. He, he's going to stay midpoint knowing that he's going to get some sort of a poach this way because there's this is the only vertical threat. He's going to take the vertical here. He's going to work in tandem here. So let's watch it play out. You can see how that works. I like the stair te technique right here by the safety as he's working to make sure the post. You can see how the mic ends up being the high hole player. He, they, for whatever reason, they're actually running a kind of a two- man concept to the boundary and i think a lot of it had to do with old dominions tight end was a big time stud they wanted to have a db on top of them uh, so you see him work with the back he's working here trailing it he's the high hole he's going to cut the crosser at the end and then you can see how we get two guys on the tight end it ends up looking really nice so again Appreciate you. Make sure you check out. Make sure you check out episode one. Uh, make sure you subscribe to Match Quarters Substack and make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel below.